Hello, everybody. My name is Alman Halatian, and I'm a researcher at Leibniz Institute for Astrophysics, Potsdam, Germany. And I would like to thank to Sandro Bonazzola for inviting me into this conference. And I'm, it is really great pleasure to be here because we are really fans of Overt and we are powerful users of that. And I would like to share our use case uh, at AIP and how we are uh, going to expand our deployment. And uh, as you can see from uh, title, it's some kind of about microservices towards to reproduce full science. Uh, I will share here some ideas how we are going to proceed that further. Uh, before going further, I would like to present our institute. Uh, formerly, our institute was Berliner Sternwarte, located in Berlin. Once Berlin became really uh, noisy due to the cars and very bright due to the evolution, it was moved outside from Berlin to Potsdam, uh, next to the Potsdam in the bar Park Babelsberg. And uh, several times our institute changed its name. Uh, finally, in 2011, we renamed it Leibniz Institute für Astrophysik Potsdam, which is emphasizes that we are a member of the Leibniz Gemeinschaft. And in this point, I would like to uh, point out that already we see here that several dates are uh, tracking the name evolution of AIP at the similar thing one should be able to track. For example, if you have a data set and you change the version of your data sets, you need to be able to reproduce all this history and how it was to rename it or uh, redeploy the data sets. Uh, our institute has also really rich history, but uh, we have also two uh, sightseeing places. If you visit Potsdam, just go over there. Uh, one of them is Great Refractor, is another one is uh, uh, so-called uh, Einstein Tower, which is considered as a milestone in architecture. But even if you cannot visit us due to the whatever reasons, you can go to the virtual reality tours at uh, the RIPDA, which is running on Overt. So our search arrays are covering from solar neighborhood up to the extragalactic astrophysics. And we are uh, not only uh, doing observations or uh, participating in uh, international projects, we are also building part of the telescopes. And uh, we have also construction workshops and labs for instrumentation, which is uh, pretty impressive. And besides that, without uh, this uh, modern infrastructure or uh, in, in order to do modern astrophysics without uh, supercomputing and e-science infrastructure, you cannot do modern astrophysics. So we are hosting in-house almost two petabyte data storage and we have several clusters and uh, not only bad data sets are stored there, we're also serving databases of the web interfaces which are developed in-house. Myself, uh, I'm a cosmologist and uh, my main research area is galaxy formation in gas dynamic numeric simulations and connecting that into the observations. The idea is that you have some model and based on that model, you put your code into the supercomputer running several months on many, many thousand cores. And you try to understand the, uh, how the universe formed and how inside this uh, universe, a uh, single galaxy formed there. And of course, without uh, supercomputing, without parallel codes, and without uh, different tools like visualization, special visualization tools, or big data uh, juggling, uh, this research wouldn't be possible. So for that, one need to have some kind of infrastructure. In uh, open source, uh, we are using open source tools whenever it's possible. As you can see in this slide, we are um, our main operating systems are Debian or CentOS, and of course, uh, Overt. We choose that as a virtualization tool. The uh, Overt at AIP, we started to use that around maybe Overt uh, version 3.5. It was in since 2016, but uh, 
uh, probably the most uh, of the uh, fully in, into the uh, fully integration into the, our infrastructure it was uh, already from starting from 3.6 um, from this is actual uh, screenshot of our infrastructure and the, of our clusters and you can see that we are hosting almost 80 virtual machines some of them are market or uh, high uh, HPC virtual machines, uh, mostly the virtual machines are used for hosting web pages and data reduction for testing purposes. And I would like to mention here the Overt has very supportive community and uh, we are really happy with that. And it was helping us several times to overcome with the problems. From this screenshot, you can see that our infrastructure is not so loaded and one would uh, think, but uh, we have uh, several HPC virtual machines which are used for data reduction. And sometimes uh, when the data is arriving from satellites or from telescopes, uh, then our workload is going up to the 100% on some virtual machines. And this is very imbalanced. Uh, situation in some cases. And I would like to mention that this why to use virtual machines into the um, in, inside this uh, pipelines, uh, data pipelines, because, uh, because of uh, sometimes the data are uh, arriving over the 10 or 20 years, but your computers are uh, becoming old and you cannot find even uh, their um, spare parts to repair and better to have them encapsulated inside the virtual machine so you can move them from host to host easily independent uh, so you are becoming independent on a uh, hardware also if you have some kind of uh, different versions of uh, pipelines you might uh, snapshot them and keep as a snapshot of the virtual machine and uh, usually what, what are you expecting from such an environment uh, as a scientific community? As astrophysicists, if you ask them, what are you expecting from the new computer or from the new environment, if you propose them to use that, they would say, in the first place, we would like to have the fastest hardware inside there, like GPUs or SSDs, or it should be high available always. But of course, uh, one of the important part of the uh, demands in some projects that uh, it should be like uh, uh, very uh, strongly connected into the parallel file systems where you can uh, analyze uh, terabytes data in a reasonable time. Of course, is it would be great to have some reuse or uh, reshare and use resources to. Uh, to be more like more or less green, uh, and uh, of course uh, the some uh, projects that require temporal some kind of services cloned and then uh, on demand uh, provided them. Buying hardware is not enough, so uh, that's mean one need to provide for the users uh, some kind of a software infrastructure where they would like to have all data, uh, their source code, or even cluster access, everything in one place. And uh, this uh, complexity needs to be obscured from the users. And uh, recently we get even uh, many requests on how one can publish on uh, demo notebooks, Python notebooks uh, to collaborators and show what they achieve. I would like here, I would like to show here some example of such a notebook where we were running this uh, notebook on about 500 uh, core, uh, job and uh, we are juggling here about 250 million star data almost on real time using uh, Dask library and uh, such a examples to share with collaborators is very valuable because on a real time analysis you might see some new data feature which is uh, crucial in uh, science and you can find something new and uh, one of the possibility to hide this all complex infrastructure, hardware infrastructure beyond the software. We um, 
found the uh, very useful the Kokao uh, project, which is a base a web-based cloud computing and course management platform. Uh, it's a part of the Sage project, uh, and. Uh, uh, mostly of uh, from this project, we are using LaTeX uh, documents, editing, and the Jupyter notebooks. And uh, for simplicity, one can imagine this whole infrastructure. What we build it up up to now, on top of the overt, looks like this is like a puzzle, very complex puzzle with every small piece. Uh, a place uh, where every small piece plays uh, a big role. Assuming you have a user with his own data and algorithms, he is going over the call-up interface uh, and accessing the uh, data sets. Uh, they uh, have own uh, Python or interactive plots, so they can now in current setup select or choose own uh, environment given version of libraries as you know most of the libraries in the python they are uh, conflicting or versioning problems um, always uh, striking us and to overcome that we have different environments for every project and they can access um, to those the environments over this call-up uh, uh, web interface. A uh, beautiful thing of that, that you can put this all uh, software into the virtual machine and this virtual machine is running some Docker container. So we have Dockerized version of the Cocalc project and our instance uh, called Colab IPD. And this also has a direct connection to the our clusters and uh, over the 10 uh, gig uh, we have uh, connection to the Lustre file system. Of course, this each uh, box one can assume as a small part of the project and we can uh, separate these all layers in that way that one can think about, uh, well, if we separate these each pieces, how we can uh, find the best solution of each of this puzzle part. And before going there, one of those requirements were, uh, if we wish virtualize this old stuff or dockerize all this stuff, do we lose some kind of performance there? And here I'm showing uh, one uh, storage benchmark. Um, one of the big questions were, how we bring this terabyte data into the uh, project? And uh, uh, in the left side, I'm demonstrating how one can, uh, how quick one can read uh, the data set based uh, lying on a, residing on a cluster file system or some storage, uh, ZFS storage, which is like ISA or exported storage. I don't want to go to, into details. Nice thing from this uh, benchmark is that if you use MD, checksum or even DD on a bare metal. And if you use uh, inside the virtual machine, then the performance of uh, reading data sets from Lustre file system or from ZFS file system is reasonable fast or quick for our usage. So this virtualization part is not striking strong. And here we, I can see uh, the cluster file system is always a little bit slower than other um, uh, storage uh, things. But uh, of course, one need to think about, uh, do you need to have very strong uh, uh, availability of your data sets or, or you want to have a performance? In this case, we choose the cluster file system for that data sets which are just simply raw data and for ZFS file system with snapshotting we are choosing uh, for those data sets where we have user data which is uh, snapshotted and uh, kept safe. So another point was uh, in an overt, we were really happy to have this result because of um, requirement on a GPU support of this environment. Uh, 
allows us uh, to run machine learning algorithms in, inside this project. And this hosted the pass-through uh, method allowing us to provide uh, GPU to the virtual machine or even Docker container, which is running inside the virtual machine with his full performance. And uh, in this uh, left side of the benchmark, you can see this is virtual machine, which is running inside the Docker container, <clears throat> a virtual machine running inside the Ovid and the Docker container, which is running inside this virtual machine. The both are uh, providing us very reasonable uh, results for benchmarking and uh, as a comparison, I'm just uh, showing here also some kind of overclocked gamer uh, desktop machine with 2080 Ti to see the quality of the T4 GPU, which is really low power, uh, low power GPU just uh, suited for machine learning algorithms. And once we have these nice results, now the question is how we can apply this through all these puzzles, how we can bring them all of, all of them together, and we can uh, mark those each these uh, services so called or this part which is uh, software or which is a little bit set of the group of the software. We can call them as a microservices and encapsulate them inside the uh, let's say some Docker containers, and we can. Uh, provide them as a group or as a separate uh, service to the users. And uh, first uh, application, uh, we were thinking just uh, using this uh, collab project and that every project might become as a one microservice. So every project might become as a one um, Docker container or one pod. If we are talking about uh, OKD uh, or OpenShift uh, jargon, then uh, every this uh, project might become as a pod. And if we go further for reproducibility of the science, uh, one can think about that some kind of data analysis uh, pipelines with uh, versioning and they. Uh, the Git and uh, Git integration might help us or with continuous integration with uh, GitLab, uh, we might achieve this uh, reproducibility of the science. So every time when one change the pipeline, you can roll back, back and forth, make branches. And uh, publishing interactive papers, like uh, providing like a binder service for own papers uh, will would be possible if one used these microservices, or um, even a very beautiful example, this distill pub uh, uh, provided by Google, this way how you publish your paper. I believe in the future, most of the real uh, science papers, they should become, or they should be published like this distill pub way, like Google does. Um, <clears throat> if we go more, um, uh, steps that uh, maybe this distributed development will be uh, possible, would be possible with these microservices. And in some cases, if you have some delaying environment, then you might uh, save uh, power or resources. But we had also some concerns. Uh, in t uh, if one look um, in these uh, environments, then uh, the complexity might arise, and also you need to think really, really carefully about your design, how you start to deal with your uh, pipelines. And uh, testing and debugging might be a problem. And also some of the tests that we're showing this inter-service call latency might, might strike uh, for some projects. For example, you cannot run MPI parallel jobs over there, but uh, if you massively scale up with uh, some libraries, it might help a lot. So what we did actually, we choose OKD for uh, our uh, 
ideas testing such a test bed uh, we install it uh, minimal minimum environment like one infrastructure node one master node and one one worker node and everything is running on over and this uh, also integrated uh, the okay the installation is also integrated within the over using the over uh, storage as a persistent storage for uh, okay so it was extremely hard to deploy this whole environment and uh, over the almost uh, 10 unfixed bugs in that time we needed to run and uh, look around and read github and read ansible source codes to understand why it's failing on uh, one node or whatever but finally we succeeded and once you have this very powerful environment what you can do with that. First of all, we deployed uh, our collab environment. And this collab environment is con constructed in that way that every project is a uh, one pod spawned on a OKD. And uh, each users which are logged in into the web interface, they might be uh, landing on a uh, given project if they have access to that project and this project might have different uh, CPU quota or different disk space quota or even memory quota. Here is a environment of the screenshot of our deployment. It looks like pretty um, impressive that every time when a user is logging in and he has some project currently running, he's uh, starting uh, the, in the background the uh, Okade is spawning the project as a pod, you can see here. And uh, uh, for example, in this case, the users were accessing three different projects and all of them, they were spawned simultaneously. Um, another interesting um, application of this environment, we found that one can deploy own uh, notebooks as a little small apps. And uh, deployment uh, steps are following. You have a, a source code as a Docker container on a GitLab. And in a Git, you enable your continuous integration, which does two deployments on a, OKD on a Kubernetes, and then you can uh, look if your staging uh, deployment is in is okay. Then you can trigger manually the production uh, deployment, and he will uh, build and recompile this uh, container and impose as a service uh, as an application inside the OKD. And uh, if we uh, look in uh, such an example here, I just deployed a simple Streamlit uh, application, which is pretty new and very awesome project. Uh, we try to play around with this uh, uh, application, how we can publish some results with interactivity on that. And you have see here the bokeh, a plot or uh, selecting number of stars from the given database actually in the background uh, the, when you pull this uh, scroller it's uh, downloads from the da remote database the part of the stars and uh, you have here some kind of uh, explanatory plots for your uh, results Another deployment example here is shown uh, using the technology like source to image uh, from OKD. If you are not uh, familiar with that, source to image is a toolkit and workflow for building reproducible container images from source code. That's mean if you are hosting somewhere on a Git uh, project, uh, some Jupyter notebook, then you might be able to deploy it as a standalone app on uh, uh, OKD. And this is very easy using these uh, image streams. 
And uh, in this example, if you follow, then uh, only using two or three comments, you are able to deploy as an independent application, uh, which is hosted on a GitHub. And uh, of course, one can also uh, build up own apps based on that uh, already uh, build it up with uh, his own uh, variables or parameters. Let's see if you have a Jupyter notebook, you um, restrict the access to that notebook using some password. And you can also even uh, redirect all these routes using by one uh, comment, all insecure uh, HTTP request directly to the HTTPS. So your application is becoming uh, secure. In the end, if you look here in the uh, roots, so you get uh, some kind of project uh, application name, uh, then a project name as a URL in the end is your Okade instance name. This is very useful for the future reproducibility of the pipelines or uh, for uh, deploying the reproducible uh, software with different versions or branches. Uh, and I think this is very powerful tool will become in a future one of the Matadori utilities in our environment. So going to the conclusion, uh, in our experience, we can proudly say that Overt is well suited for academic workloads and even more, one can also use that for uh, high performance computing and uh, big data analysis. And as we shown uh, in this uh, presentation, sh some um, reproducible pipelines one can uh, organize using uh, two complex uh, projects together, OCAD and OVERT. If you marrying them together, then you can achieve very, very strong results. And uh, I would like to mention here in the end, uh, some kind of, it's uh, nice to have some kind of long-term support for Overt. Unfortunately, uh, it's uh, all these technologies are developing very rapidly. And uh, in some point, uh, you're over helmet by technical parts instead of this fancy scientific part. And uh, it would be nice to have a very a good integration with InfiniBand infrastructures because uh, in our case, all our data flows are going over the 10 gig interfaces and other routers, which are bringing data sets from the InfiniBand. Maybe there are uh, some kind of ways to do that, but um, it's nice to have in the future better integration with the InfiniBand uh, network. And one of the biggest missing puzzle is high performance uh, storage in this whole environment. And in now, tests, we have seen that GlasFS is still slow for our purposes, but it's a pretty nice project. And I wish that in some point GlasFS will become powerful enough to hold uh, concurrency with um, Lustre file systems. And thank you for your attention. And if you have some other questions, let me know. And I have a uh, very short announcement that in the end of this uh, presentation, I have also supplementary two slides, which are just uh, showing the example between uh, monolith and uh, some uh, microservice based uh, infrastructure or application based on an example of our VR point IPD e web page. And uh, I don't want to go this, into these uh, details, but uh, if you're interested in, you can just have a look at the supplementary material.